go? Where did we go? Where did we go? And where have I been? Who am I now? Who am I now? Who am I now? And who was I then? Is it all? Beautiful people, I'm Rachel Severs, and you are listening to Consent to Treats Just the Tip, a condensed version of Thursday's episode. If you like things short and sweet, this Just the Tip episode is for you. If you want to hear the full uncut session and all the commentary and tips, come back Thursday and we'll have that for you. Today we are listening to a real life counseling session between me and Julie, a hairstylist, fitness buff, and single mother of four. Recovered from a traumatic two-year relationship with an abusive narcissist, Julie is now exploring dating and all the trust issues that come along with that. She's diving into her relationship with her mom and taking bold steps to change the way she interacts with her. She originally came to me for counseling because she was experiencing intense symptoms of PTSD caused by her ex-boyfriend's violence, panic attacks, nightmares, shaking, avoidance. She did the hard work in counseling to heal her nervous system and move through the grief and loss she experienced after their breakup. Today, she feels an internal strength and peace that allows her to notice old relationship patterns that no longer work for her, namely with her mother and the men she dates. For the sake of her privacy, we are keeping Julie's real name and identifying information hidden. She has given us permission to record and publish this session. Please be aware, sessions with me always include mature language. All right. And with that, hate it, love it, learn something. Enjoy. So tell me what's up. What's going on what's with mom? I know I told you last time that there was like a month or two before where I was having very dark moment. Mm-hmm. I will say it was nearly suicidal dark, but I, I know that would never be an option because I have my children. I would never do that. And I thought I'm going to reach out to my family because I, I've, I've never felt like this before. So I reached out to each one of my three siblings and my mother. I said, I think I'm feeling a deep depression and I, I just need somebody to talk to. And she said, well, what do you expect me to do about it? And then I responded with, well, I just need to talk to somebody and I need some help. And she said, no, I can't deal with this. My doctor says no stress in my life. I have high blood pressure, no stress whatsoever. From a young age, she just unloaded all her depression on me. And I thought I would never felt that way before. So the only time that I do, like, I'm your daughter, I'm telling you I'm in a dark place and you can't, that's your response. And I have two daughters, how dare you shun me What in my darkest moment when I'm, I'm coming to you in the most vulnerable state of my life ever. And then to be shunned like that. It just opened my eyes because we've been doing the reparenting therapy. It just opened my eyes that she's not a peaceful space for me to go. I want to just point out how we might be comfortable in relationships where people are talking down to us, people are being critical of us, then they're flip-flopping to being really nice to us, to pull us back in, especially when in our childhood, we were taught that this is love. Love bombing. Yeah. Buttering me up. Yeah. Love is, yeah, I'm going to be really sweet. I'm going to pull you in and then I'm going to detach because I'm going through something and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to be really critical of you. I'm going to abuse you and then I'm going to flip flop and be sweet again and then detach because I'm depressed and But as if in our childhood, we understand this as love in our adulthood, it will actually feel comfortable and it will actually feel good. It's like a disgusting thing, right? Because that's not how I am with my children. You are doing the most powerful healing, which means you're going to the actual source (laughs) and you are rewriting that script with the source of that. Oh, I just got the willies like bad. 
it's painful. It's very painful because I don't want to gloss over this. So painful that most of us, myself included, don't do it. You're doing it. It hurts me. Mm -hmm. I have this undying loyalty for her and I know I need to cut her off. I know I do, but I can't. Okay. I know I'm going to continue to hurt. And right now that's what I have to choose because I can't cut her off. I realize now that she's the one that made me the black sheep. My dad actually held me high, you know, and she's the one that I'm going to have your dad spank you when you get home or whatever. And it was like, even the other kids know that she doesn't treat them like that. She would never but I've just come to terms with the fact that when we go to family functions like this wedding, they're going to all be sitting in a group and I'm going to be sitting by myself. And I, I put on this show like it doesn't bother me, like it doesn't phase me. But dealing with my mom has been, it's been really eye opening and de dealing with the whole reparenting. Yeah. It's helped me tremendously just kind of come out of that deep, dark funk. I'm responsible for myself. Like, no one else is responsible for me. I wasn't bad as a child. I was just curious and outspoken. And if I was mistreated or something wasn't right, then I said, hey, no, that's not nice. And because I would tell her that's not nice or that hurt my feelings, then I was the bad guy. And then she, it's almost like she would just do it worse, amp it up a little bit try and get a real good rise out of me. But I was always the trustworthy one that she came to and poured her heart out to because I would tell her, you know, you're wonderful and all these lovely things about her that she probably needed to hear at the time. So now I look back and I'm thinking, well, did she really come to me because she trusted me more or did she know I was going to fill that void that she needed filled at the time? And so she was just using me. And I, I, I never thought of it that way. I always thought, well, she came to me because I can empathize with her. And But now that I look back, like you were saying, the being sweet and detaching and pushing away and then pulling back, pulling closer and being sweet and kind and loving. And it felt so good. Mm -hmm. That felt amazing. But then the pushing away and the, you know, you're bad and you're not a good person and the, the more I look back at that, I'm like thinking sh she was just using me because I was easier to get a rise out of. The other kids are sort of detached. She would act like an absolute child, be screaming like a lunatic. And I would just think, oh, well, my friend's parents don't do that. That's kind of immature. If it wasn't, you know, it was mostly just directed towards my dad. But if it was directed towards me, I would think that's you're being immature. You know, as a teenager, I was like, you're, you're kind of being immature. Oh, man. It would be going down after that. Yeah, you know? no wonder why she made you the black sheep. Because she was being immature, and I said, hey, um, like, you're kind of being immature. Oh, yeah, you saw through her, so she yeah. had to put you down. And I guess I knew that the wrath would come or whatever, but... What now? Moving forward, what now? I don't know what's going to happen, so I wanted to say everything to her but the word no. And why are you trying to not use the word no? Because I think with my siblings, they're going to, she's going to use them and get them turned against me somehow because I'm going to tell her no, I don't want her to go with me. But if I tell her, if I don't say the word no, and I say, I'm getting, I'm getting a panic attack. Okay. Just pause. Take your time. Your body right now believes that it's dangerous to say no. Believes that it's dangerous for your mom to go talk to your siblings about it. For your siblings to be upset that you told no. Your your body is responding like as if you're a child. When it actually was dangerous to say no to mom. Right? Yeah, that one made me see stars. Right. Yeah. Today, it's safe. You're fine yeah. if your mom gets her feelings hurt. Mm -hmm. You're okay. You're okay if your siblings think that that was mean of you to say no to mom. That You're okay. It's safe. You can do it. Mm -hmm. And you know, your body will do its thing and then it'll, it'll come back down again. 
back to a place of safety. Whenever we set boundaries with someone, the most important thing to keep in mind is this is about me. It's not about you. This is what I need. I need to take a flight by myself. I need to sleep by myself. I need quiet. It has nothing to do with you. And then whatever that other person does with that, that's their maturity level. That's their emotional intelligence level. That's, that's them. They have a right to do with it whatever they want. She has a right to be mad about it. She has a right to have her feelings hurt. You don't have to do anything with that. It's okay. I think what I've been holding on to all along that you have helped me with so much is why? Why is she like that? Why Why can't she understand? Why is she so emotionally immature? Why, why, why? And I don't give a shit anymore. I don't need to know why. I'm never going to know. Yeah, she just There's is. not an she, answer. She just is. She just is. She yeah, just is who she really is. really no answer, and I'm never going to get one. Mm-hmm. So by constantly trying to search for an answer, like, why is she like this? I'm just making myself crazy. Yeah. So now I've learned from you that you just let it be and just be here for myself instead of people pleasing and pleasing others because then I'm not happy, you know, Yeah. but I'm keeping the peace. But now I'm learning that keeping the peace with other people doesn't keep the peace within me. You see my smile? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) You're like, you're learning, you're getting it. (laughs) Hey. I just learned how to ride a bike that you've been teaching me how to ride all year. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's one challenge at a time. You know, we can't like snap our fingers and suddenly we're, we're just nailing everything, right? Oh, I want to. Life keeps presenting us with this kind of a challenge and then it presents us with a different challenge. Then it presents us with a new person and a different challenge, yeah. you know, and it, it's not that we're moving backwards or that we've, you know, lost our way. It's like everything's a brand new challenge and we get to keep moving forward. Well, I didn't even realize that she was such a challenge for my life until you kind of started figuring it out just through getting to know me. And I'm so grateful that you could see something like that because I think this part of me is where I'm going to grow the most from the challenge that was that I've been faced with my entire life, however many years. Yeah. So this is like a she's like a spider web the effects of her, you know, her little, little webs move Uh into parenting, relationships, physical stuff. I mean, how you keep your home, she's She's going to affect so much. So the fact that you're going straight, I cannot express enough how fucking cool it is that you're going straight to the source and you're handling it directly with her. That's, that is, I want to like get down and, you know, (laughs) salute you you're you're doing great it is so hard don't underestimate what you're doing right now most people never get there so that's amazing you should be super proud of yourself that you're brave enough that you've acquired the skills to do it that you have enough energy you know to keep at it also let's be clear that when we set boundaries with a person like your mom For whatever reason, she doesn't either know or like respecting. She doesn't know how to respect a person's boundaries. She doesn't like doing it. It's pretty intense response usually when you set a boundary with her. When you do that, the message is, I no longer need my mom. Because there's an actual threat that she'll disconnect from you. I guess that's exactly why I'm afraid. Of, I used to always say, I'm scared to death of my mother. <laughs> you know, I used to tell my friends, you know, my friends would say something and we'd talk about our moms or whatever. And I'd say, I'm scared to death of my mother. And I could not, I know that that came out of my mouth all the time, but I could not think of a reason why. Like she wasn't going to spank me. You know, my mom wasn't a spanking type. Abandon you really emotionally. I, I and I, I know that now that that's the scariest thing is, I think because yes. there have been so many times where she's nearly abandoned me that that's the worst feeling I've ever had from any human being ever. Yeah. I mean, I've been beat up by a boyfriend and, you know, talked about behind my back with friends and I think what i mean my child was even left by his dad and i had to take care of myself and that didn't even hurt as bad as the possibility of the thought that my mom was going to abandon me somehow and not speak to me again or not want me as her daughter pause with that that's huge 
just even the thought of the possibility of my mom abandoning me is the most painful experience of my life. And that's true. It's that big. And that's why I have this undying loyalty for her because it's not for her, it's for me. Of course. But I know that I'm going to continue to hurt with her because she's going to not change. And that's why we're pulling in the resource of you becoming your own parent. Sometimes I'll do something or say something or get upset or frustrated or something and look back and think, ugh. A healthy reminder, it's actually healthier if our kids do see us acting like an asshole sometimes. (laughs) And then they see us come back to the table and say, man, I'm sorry. Our kids are going to be assholes sometimes too. But if you're teaching them, hey, you know, when those moments come, this is how you repair it. This is how you take care of the relationship. That's really, really healthy for them to see. Yeah, people have a hard time when their parents never make mistakes ever. Then they don't know what to do when mistakes are made. It's I just want to be a better parent and I want my children to be the best that they can be too, but also know that they're going to make mistakes and I'm still going to love them no matter what mistakes they make because I don't feel that even even to this day. If you need like a little mantra along the way, just remember everybody has a right to act however they want. So if she wants to throw fit, if she wants to get crazy, if your siblings want to sneer or whatever, They have a right to that. Give them that freedom. Yeah. You don't have to do anything with that. Yeah. If you want, if you don't want. Who cares? Stop caring so much about (laughs) everyone else and start caring about me. Whoa. Who would have thought? Good work. Thank you. Is this an okay place to end? I think so. If you're happy with that. Yep. Julie, Julie, Julie. Can I relate to Julie? I can relate to her to a certain extent. She surpassed me. She's doing more than me. She's doing better than me. (laughs) She is going to the source. Bowen's therapeutic style was to take people back to their family of origin because that's where we are taught to think the way we think and behave the way we behave and see the world the way we see it. So he believed that, you know, really no healing could happen unless you actually go to the source and tackle the problems at the source. Well, that's what Julie's doing. She's going to the source. She's going to her mom. Oh, even within myself, I feel this like tightness come up. The idea of going to my mom and doing that. I've never been that brave, but she is. She had to have the situation with her mom. She had to move through it so that she could finally recognize my mother is not capable of mothering me. It's so painful. I believe that all this stuff about her mom is coming up for her now because the reason why she found herself in that relationship with her ex is because of the traits that her mother instilled in her. Love is hot and cold. It's intense. It gets taken from you. You don't deserve a say. I get to say whatever I want. I get to manipulate you. I get to be super emotional, but you need to remain no matter what. All of these things that mother taught her to be, she was in her last relationship. And look at what happened. Anyone who follows me or has listened to this podcast, you've heard me talk about this, but it is so significant. I'm going to talk about it again. Julie does this beautifully. She gets activated during session. Her nervous system starts to dysregulate. Her heart rate goes up. She puts a name to it. She says, I'm having a panic attack. Her, What we want to do when our body dysregulates like that is stay with it. Be with your body. Stop thinking about things and just hang out with your body. What's my heart rate doing? What's my breath doing? Just sit with all of that. If your body wants to move, move. If it wants to sit down, sit down. If it wants to cry, cry. Give it whatever it wants. Be with the body and you'll notice you'll come back down much more quickly than if you stay in your head and you keep thinking, if you keep talking, if you try to ignore what's happening with your body, it'll intensify and it'll last a long time. The Gottmans have done a ton of work around relationships, and what they've learned is that there's three ways that a person can respond to another. One is turning toward. So if I walk in a room and my partner turns toward me, it feels good. They're looking at me. 
They're recognizing that I'm in the room. They're acknowledging my presence. They're responding to me when I talk. They're turning towards me. The second type is turning against. So if I walk in a room and my partner yells at me or berates me or makes fun of me, they're recognizing that I'm there, but they're doing it in a very negative, hurtful way. I see you and I'm going to hurt you. This is very painful to be in a relationship with someone that turns against you or attacks you. But what the Gottmans have found is that the most painful response to give a person that you're in a relationship with is turning away from them. And that means that when I walk in a room, you don't even look up. You don't even acknowledge that I exist. When I speak, you don't even respond. For a child, is it destructive to be attacked? Yes, physically, verbally. Of course, that hurts a child but at least the child knows that they exist in your eyes. I'm important enough for this person to spend energy attacking me. As odd as that sounds, that's what it feels like for a child. At least I'm important enough for you to be paying attention to me somehow right now. But when you turn away from a child, the message the child is getting is, I am not even important enough to be acknowledged I mean nothing. I'm bringing this up because this was Julie's experience in childhood. It was, oh, baby, 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 your mommy's little baby, da, 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 da. And then it was, you don't even exist. My tip for listeners is take a look at, if you've experienced abuse in childhood, take a look at the type of abuse that you've experienced. Usually physical violence is the easiest one to detect and everyone can agree on, yes, this child was abused because they were hit. But we don't get as much validation for the days that passed when our parents wouldn't even talk to us. Not everybody agrees with us when we say we were abused in childhood, right? Because, oh, you didn't have it so bad. So they gave you the cold shoulder sometimes. I'm here to tell you the damage is more difficult to overcome when you were ignored, when you were disconnected from, when emotion was removed from you. Is this a tip? I don't know. Is this a acknowledgement? Maybe. Maybe I just want to validate you right now so that you can validate yourself. The recognition of abuse And allowing yourself to say, yes, I am the victim of abuse. Not so that you can live there forever, but so that you can own that with confidence that now you can take control and decide what you want to do with that so that you don't have to be a victim forever. That's why I want to validate you here. That being said, thank you so much for listening, beautiful people. This has been Consent to Treat. From Rachel Seavers and Elodie. (laughs) Thank you for listening and supporting beautiful people. Goodbye. Goodbye.